Oh, sorry. Hi, this is Gail from Bernina of Naperville, and uh, today we're going to discover what this is for. It's a contraption, all right. It's a foot, and it goes on your Bernina. And there's actually two different versions. So don't forget when you pick this up at your local Bernina dealer, you want to pick up if you have a seven or eight series. You want to make sure that you get the right ruffler for that. And if you have a different machine. Don't forget, so the yellow packaging is for anything that's not a seven or an eight series, and the orange packaging is for the seven and the eight series. So with that out of the way, today is all about the number 86 Bernina Ruffler. It happens to be the accessory of the month, and we are here in June of 2021. So if you're watching this in June of 2022, it's probably a different accessory of the month this month, but these YouTube videos live on in infamy forever. So. I know, I've talked too much. Let's get started. Okay, thanks. All right, let's have a look at the Bernina ruffler attachment. So it is a contraption. Um, this is the little uh, cone area where it's going to attach to the to the machine and then this goes over where the screw is on and so as this goes up it either takes a pleat every stitch or look at this little guy there's a gear on the end so here is where it takes a pleat every stitch that's at one the next one is six so now there it's going to take a pleat every six stitches there it takes a pleat every 12. So you might ask, why do I want to take no pleats and have this ruffler on? Well, sometimes you might be stitching along, do a little bit of pleating, and then you need to stop, but you don't want to take all of the things off of the of the machine, like you don't want to take this off and you just want to do a few stitches of blank stitching. And so that's what that would be for. So we talk about this making pleats. So there are a lot of different gathering attachments that you can get. You might have seen our video a couple months ago where we did gathers using a serger. Well, the gathers using a serger is more of like a hand-drawn bobbin that does the gathering where this ruffler is actually doing the pleating. And there's a bunch of ways that you can adjust this. Uh, a lot of it comes down to what is your stitch length? Are you gonna set it at taking a pleat every stitch? Are you going to set it at taking a pleat every six stitches, things like that. So I'm gonna show you how I determine what I wanna do with the ruffler. So that's kind of the, the easiest bit is just kind of play time, figuring out what you like, and then once you get your ratio going, then you know how to set up the machine. Another thing that you can do, this, um, foot comes with a little flathead screwdriver that looks like this and there's a screw right here on the ruffler and it comes from you know at the default setting it's somewhere in the middle but if you want deeper pleats you actually tighten the screw just like this and then the the more you tighten the screw, the deeper the pleats are gonna be and vice versa. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to attach this foot. I've got some 10 inch strips of material cut and I'm gonna show you all of the different ways that you can kind of play around with this foot to, to do what you need to do with it. So if we look at our machine, the first thing we need to do is just simply get the ruffler on and I'm putting that piece over the needle, just like that. Then I wanna make sure that my presser foot is up so I can slip the cone over and pull my little lever down in the back. So now I have the ruffler foot right on my machine. And so that's, that's pretty easy. And today I'm using a Bernina 590 and the 590 has presser foot recognition. So the ruffler foot is number 86. So I just simply picked my foot and typed in number 86 right here. Then we're gonna need to play with our stitch length. So I'm gonna keep my machine positioned the needle position positioned as the straight because we cannot do a zigzag stitch with the ruffler. In fact, if I try to do a zigzag, you can see here the machine is not letting me do that because it knows that I have the ruffler attachment on. So there are different ways that you can play. I know that in the past when I've done ruffles, 
I will set my stitch to 1.75 and put my ruffler taking a stitch every six stitches. So that gives me about, for some material, about a 1.5 ratio. But if we want to do deep pleats and lots of gathers, we actually go to a very long stitch or we do maybe somewhere like a four and a half and we do the stitch, take a pleat every stitch. So let's just play around. I'm gonna imagine that you know how to turn your stitch length dial to change your stitch length here. That's where we get the millimeters um, read out here. So let's have a look at how to make a ruffle. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with taking a pleat every stitch. And I don't have matching thread here. I have a contrasting thread. I thought that you might find this helpful um, so that you can see what the thread looks like on the material. I have cut a 10 inch piece of material about four inches wide. And this is literally just to test to make sure what we're doing. Now, if we look at this foot, do you see how there's the underneath part that will just stitch straight and do no gathers whatsoever. In order to do gathering, you have to slip it in between this slot, just like this, so that little forky, grippy thing can actually hold on to it. So I'm gonna lower my presser foot, just like this. So now I have my stitch length set to 4.5, and it's gonna be taking a pleat every stitch. And I'm using a single layer of material. And I like to go relatively slow with this, just because that way it's more accurate. And now I'm gonna lift and cut. And so there are our cute little pleats and they're really super cute. This, so this was 10 inches. And now if I measure this, and I have a little ruler right here on my machine, I have measured that down to three and a half inches. So that is about, you know, just a little less than three times the, the, the gathering. So this would be really appropriate for maybe doing a dust ruffle on a bed, maybe a really full skirt of some kind. Uh, one thing I want to point out to you is when I use a ruffler attachment and I'm doing it on a garment or something like that, I'm not always trying to do the math to get my pattern piece to fit perfectly. What I'm doing is I think about, about the ratio that I need, I cut a little bit extra, and then I ruffle. I don't try to make a pattern piece fit into the area, but that's just me. You might be better at math than me. And then another thing that you can do is a lot of times when I make a ruffle and I'm making it out of material that's not double-sided, I, you know, maybe I have to piece and I have a seam that's gonna be hidden in here. So I fold my material and I wanna sew it together first. So there's an example of, I don't wanna take off my ruffler here, but I do wanna just do a little bit of a basting stitch on here, just so I can fold my two pieces together. So you saw that I moved my piece to zero, zero pleats. So now I just made a little basting stitch there. So now what I want to do is gather up this full piece. But did you know that you can also gather onto a plain piece of material? So you do that by starting off with the ruffler down just directly on top of the piece that you don't want to gather. Then you slip the piece you want to gather in between that little tongue and move your adjuster right here. And in this case, we're still dealing with the taking a stitch or taking a pleat every stitch. So now let's see how this behaves, shall we? <laughs> and I'm gonna carefully hold everything. Whoops. 
see it wiggles very quickly so but there's a little example of how you can gather to a flat piece of material and we would take that stitching that you see there out but we'd have a cute a cute little ruffle there and that's a little bit full so let's say you wanted to do the same thing but you wanted it to be a little bit less gathery so this time I'm gonna take my stitch length down to 1.75 and I'm gonna adjust my little bracket here to take a pleat every six stitches and we can still sew onto something while we're gathering if you really wanted to do that. Otherwise, we can just gather. I said this is playtime, and so this is how I play normally. <laughs> All right, so now let's have a look at how this behaves. our pleat and you can see how cute that looks and it's not nearly as full as this one was so this might be a little bit more appropriate for the trim or something like that and so if we wanted to test and see what kind of fullness this one gives I'm just going to go ahead and take another 10 inch piece feed it through my little gathering piece here There we go. And now you can see what's happening here. So that one drew it up about five inches. So that's about a two times ratio. I think pick every 12 pleats or every, every 12 stitches, it makes a pleat. And now this is still with the 1.75 stitch length. can see how that looks and that turns out to be about six and a quarter from a 10 inch piece. Now there's a lot of even cooler stuff that you can do so let me share some of that with you. So one of the things that you can do is you can actually gather ribbon. You can take material and make like little folded over strips of material to create a, your own trim, all kinds of stuff. We made a cake topper that looks like a unicorn. And you can see on this example, we have all ruffler stuff. So we made a little bit larger of a ruffle for the bottom. Then the trim that's added around this cake was done taking a stitch every, taking a pleat every stitch with a stitch length of four. Then once we pleated all of that stuff up, then we came back with a different foot that we could do a decorative stitch with. And then we did a decorative stitching over our stitching to create that trim. It's just a really fun way to add embellishments to anything you want. So here's a little piece, this is like a two inch piece that I folded into thirds like this. And so I'm not gonna sew this onto anything first. I'm gonna move my little selector back to taking a pleat every stitch. Then I'm going to elongate my stitch bitch back to four millimeters. And now I'm gonna just slip this into position. And this is the opportunity where you go a little slower drop my presser foot 
And then this also might be the opportunity to use that screw to really make a deeper pleat. So I'm gonna screw that screw in all the way there. So here we go. And don't give any resistance to this material at all. And there you get some pretty trim. So then once you do that, you can add a little bit of fancy stitching. So this is where I'm going to pick up my foot and take off the ruffler. And I'm going to add my dual feed number 20 open toe foot. And I'm just going to pick a satin stitch, stitch number 407. Tell the machine that I have 20D on it. I might go a little narrower on my stitch. Let's go to about five and a half, maybe just slightly closer together. Okay, let's see how this looks. people will make that initial stitch with a water soluble thread and that works great because then that way you can just dampen this and you never see that original line of stitching. But there, there's our little trim. Are you gonna go ruffle everything up now? I mean, come on. You can put these on rumba pants, uh, diaper cover panties. Uh, you could add ruffles to ready to wear. You can make a dust ruffle. You can make a ruffle on the edge of a pillow. The sky is the limit. You could even make your own fake unicorn cake just like we did. But you know how we are gonna be making our, what, are, what we're gonna be using our ruffler for? we are going to be making our own awards because it is, we all deserve an award. It's summer of 2021. We've been cooped up with everybody. We haven't gone out many places and gosh dang it, we're still having a good attitude and doing things and laughing about it. So in the celebration of pie making season and county fair days coming up, we only thought it fitting that we would make our own award for me. That's right, I sewed my own award and I thought, what should I get an award for? And initially I thought maybe, you know, first place bikini model, but you know, those days have long passed. So I thought, you know what, what is my best asset? And it's my eyelashes. So yours truly gets the Latisse Eyelash Award. <laughs> Anyway, you can see we, we did like a little full ruffle here. I used the embroidery software and the embroidery machine to make this silly thing. Anyway, if you want to see more videos just like this one, don't forget to check out our Bernina of Naperville YouTube channel. Now, I promise there are silly videos and there are very serious videos there and somewhere in between. So it's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville and there you can like, comment and subscribe. But in the meantime, don't be so serious about your sewing and go out there and make something silly. <laughs> Thanks for watching.